Catholic Church. Good morning. Good morning. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Remove not the old landmark, and enter not into the fields of the populace. For their Redeemer is mighty, he shall plead their cause with thee. Apply thine heart unto instruction, and thine ears to the words of knowledge. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod, and shalt deliver his soul from hell. My son, if thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice, even mine. And I've read to you from Proverbs chapter 23, verses 9 through 15. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Most Holy Father, we come to you this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts. We want to praise you, Father. We want to bless your name. This is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice in it. We just want to thank you because you've been with us throughout this time. You've encouraged us through your word. You've informed us that you are our everything, our comforter. You're there with us as we suffer and go through so many trials and tribulations. We just want to thank you. Thanking you for a beautiful morning. The sun is shining bright. Some might complain because it's a little cool out there, Lord. But this is what you have made, and I'm going to be glad in it. I love you, Lord. I ask you to continue to be close to me. Continue to guide me as I walk through and be with me, Father, all the way to the end. You said it. You said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you until the end, and I believe that. So as we go through your word today, we want to thank you for those that are here, those that are on their way, those that are lost, Father. Nobody can touch them like you can. And we want to ask you to just open our hearts and our minds to your word. In your son Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And with that, I will ask Sister Winston if she would come up and share the word with us. Good He lives. And I know he lives. <laughs> I thank God he lives. Yeah. So, what a word. What a word. <laughs> he lives. <laughs> thank God he lives. <clears throat> oh, it's all about faith, y'all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm excited about every day that Jesus gives. Our lesson is said, risen from the dead. If this hadn't happened, all the sins and things we would have to bear. Ain't no way in the world you're going to be able to, if you look at yourself, see how you could come through. And all the sins we had on if Jesus hadn't have took it, risen from the dead. God is, and I thank him for it. Our lesson text of John 21 through 10. And 19 through 20. And we're gonna just go before the throne of God because something gotta happen when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ and what He has done for you. Something gotta happen. Dear Father, we come thanking you 
and we come saying, let the church hear from the Spirit. Let us hear what the Spirit say to the church. Let the order of the service go according to your word. Not our will, but let thy will be done. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Here, uh, we used to start with uh, verses uh, from the, um, what we have for Sunday school. But I'd like to give a little background before we go into the uh, scripture. Because if you go back to last Sunday lesson, they kind of got a little ahead of uh, each other. But I believe God did it for a reason. Because he said all things work together for our good. <coughs> so when we go back, we know we are talking about a man that was sent from God. He was, he was Jesus and God. And a lot of people said, how can that be? But haven't you found out in life, when God tells us something, we always trying to compare it to how the world is, how the world do things. How in the world can a man be man and Jesus? How can he come? We got all these questions. We are so wise, and then we don't even think about how God has allowed us to have a body that he made. Our body is so magnificent, man can't even for night half of it. So here you come with your little for night mind, and you're going to go and tell God what to do <laughs> and how to do something. He said, them stars got up there. Man can't explain how they see it just holding up there. But God can. He said he knows the hair from them. How your head? How many hairs up there? So when you go reading God's word, I'll tell you right now, you're not smarter than God. You can't do what he does. So here we come, just like the people down there in that day. Put yourself in that place. Jesus came as a babe. And as a babe, he came. And he came to do just what we're talking about today to die. Hang on that cross for me and you. I like how it says he went about his father's business. No matter what, go about your father's business. Because man ain't going to see it. Man cannot tell you, but God can. I'm so glad we got this. Because when you get into this story, you've got different people saying different things. Five or six people looking at it, and everybody come out with something different. <clears throat> and we're going to find out different prophecies that God had it written like this. So you wouldn't have no doubt. <clears throat> and the things that's not in this Bible, remember, that means he didn't need for you to know. Because whatever you need to know is in this Bible. Here we see Jesus going around healing. And it, so you getting excited because... Somebody don't believe what you said. They didn't believe Jesus. He went in the temple. He did all oh, that was good. But did they want to hold him up? Mm -mm. It's only when they saw that he was healing that they was following him. Not for the right reason. Some did. Some didn't. So here we see in this lesson, as it was coming up to, we find out that some of the people he healed stayed right with him. Some of the people that know what he was about, he was right there with him. But sometimes you see, even the one that was closer to him, when he went to pray, his disciples <coughs> that he had with him, he said, you stay here till I go and pray. When he came back, they were asleep. That's the way that he Everything he did is showing us how life is going to be. So here we see that it got to the point, those that were supposed to be in authority, they did not do what they had already learned. They knew the word. But as you look at it, all they did was fight against Jesus. The whole time they kept going against Jesus. 
when he got down to the end, you could see the enemy thought he had it because they was able to arrest him. But see, if you keep on reading, it said, if you just knew that from what somebody said, then said he had the rest of the part, you wouldn't have known that they couldn't have did none of that unless God allowed. We have a will and we have a permissive will. The prophecy says that he went to his own, his own didn't receive it. Here, as we get into our lesson that we're coming up to, we see that uh, as he got to the end, it said the one that was supposed to be with him, Judas, had them set up with the enemy. Watch that you don't set up with the enemy. Amen. He walked up to uh, the, the, the ones that were supposed to be for Christ, against, was really against him and everything he did. And he said, I'm going to give you a sign. And look what he went for, y'all. 30 pieces of gold. Cool. <laughs> and it said that he gave him the sign of a kiss. Everybody kissing you and hugging you. They ain't never, don't really have to be mean and they love you. But he he was predestined. It was already, God already knew all of this. But they tell me they arrested him. And they tried him, and I mean they made up some some things to try to make it sound like that Jesus had did so much wrong. But one of their, one that was with them, that was against him, said, I find no fault in him. So he didn't want to have nothing to do with it. He sent it back to the other. And here we see he's up on the cross. He's on the cross. They mocked him. They stormed him. They lied on him. They had three that was on the cross. And they'd rather give up somebody that don't did so much sin that he was destined to actually die. But then, guess who took their place? It was Jesus that took his place. The male factor, they call him. He took their, one of them place. And he tells me, even on the cross, they was mocking. But one cried out, Lord, remember me. He's died. He died on that cross. And when he died on that cross, they tell me the sun refused to shine. They tell me as it got on down that not only did he die, but they put him in a tomb. And that's where we come in at today. They put him in a tomb, in a borrowed grave, our God that owns everything in a bar of grave because he didn't need it for long. <laughs> so here we see as we come into our lesson, risen from the dead. When you take on Jesus and what he did, you arise from being dead to alive. So we're going to start with our scripture text. We're going to ask, uh, <coughs> we'll start with you, Sister Brenda. Uh, the <coughs> unexpected empty tomb, we're going to ask you what you do three Three verses. Three verses. Please excuse my seat. Mm -hmm. The first day of, of the week coming, Mary Magdalene Earl, Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher, and seen, seeing the stone taken away from the sepulcher, then she ran she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that and that other disciple, and came to the sepulcher. I'm gonna ask. Um, we're so glad to see you here, <laughs> each and every one of you. But we're gonna ask uh, my sister, but she read four and five when 
when I say that she knew who I'm talking about. <laughs> and I said, at the moment, my memory won't come to me. Michelle, thank you. <laughs> Much as I write it on them cards, I should know it. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Okay. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the soldier. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw that in his clothes blind, yet he not went in. Praise the Lord. Looking at that, that's the unexpected empty tomb, which we have read thus far. Unexpected. They saying that, you know, once Jesus died, the Joseph wrapped him. They, he, he, they tells us that wrapped him in swaddling clothes and they, and back then in that time, yeah, that's how they used to bury people. Oh. And they put a cloth over their face. And it was telling us they used ointment. And they said, now, uh, here we see that right away, this is one of the disciples, John. It says that um, the first day of the week, and we used to said Monday was the first day when we was in school, but Sunday, and people used to say, why in the world we worship on Sunday when the Sabbath is Saturday? <laughs> and see, the Sabbath was made for, for man, but they said the reason is because of this here first statement here, because Jesus rose on the first day of the week, and that was Sunday. Here we see Jesus told them, had them, gave them all the information they needed. But because they wasn't listening with a spiritual ear, they didn't attain about what was going to happen. You know how somebody be talking to you and you get part of the information? And then later on you say, oh, they did say that. But it's after the fact. So here we see on the first day of the week, John tells us, that Mary Magdalene got up early. And I, when I saw that, all I could think about when we was in Sunday school, we used to have to get up early to go and say our speeches. Early, because you know, we try to lay down when we're young. We try to lay down as late as we possibly can. But that's what something that the old people put up early. You're going to do something for the Lord. Don't lag around and be lazy about it. Get up. And prepare yourself. God want us to be prepared people. I looked at how this hill was placed in the Bible. And I said to myself, he put in here, not how the confusion came up, but how it should be. So he said, early in the morning, this lady, one they now don't want to hear from, but... There are some ladies God has called out to do certain things. But man don't see it that way. But who are we supposed to be following? Mary got up and it says in other books of the Bible, it tell you a little more. It was more than Mary Magdalene. It was other women. But Mary, John pulled out Pacific, was the first to get to the supposed. And she had a plan. When I get there, I'm going with ointments. So she didn't leave her ointments at home. She had it with her. Her mind was set. I'm going to serve the Lord. We should keep our mind on <laughs> serving the Lord. When she went yes, there, yes, yes. they said it was still dark. Have you all noticed in the morning now, some days it's cloudy. Some days the sun is real high. And you go and look at it, and they say, oh, the sun rose at 530, 6 o'clock. But it's a different sunrise, y'all, because he's coming back. Here is letting us know. She didn't think in the beginning, who going to move that stone away? But she got what she needed. You just take what you need, and you go with what God already engaged you. And he'll make the rest of the way. She didn't ponder about, oh, let me see who's going to go with me. They was ready. <coughs> they didn't wait till somebody appointed them. They was ready to go and do what they thought that they should be doing. Here, 
we see they said that Mary, this Magdalene, she was running. <laughs> I've seen people get up and you be wondering, uh, uh, said, read the scripture. Oh, wait. Uh, they not, you're supposed to be ready when your time comes. Here it said, let God get you ready. They got, he got Mary ready to go <laughs> to do this, em, what they call <clears throat> embalming. They do that right today. Here we see, but it's a different way. As time goes on, things do change. But it said, they did it because they loved him. Here, that she, when she got to the sepulcher, they said, it wasn't what they expected to see. When uh, you look at this here, discovery, how it was happening, the women seen that, that the, when, they, when they killed Jesus and they put him in the tomb, a lot of people was watching. So they saw this huge stone. They, put, they told me the stone was pushed <coughs> in front of it like on a slant. So that if you had to take it off, you got to push it upward. Have anybody in here had, ever went up a hill? It's harder than coming down, right? Down, you just keep doing But you're wrong. But going up, you got to. And they said this stone was over two tons. I mean, that, that, that was some weight. It was, and they said it took a whole bunch of men to put it in place. And really was going to take something because they had to push it up. So here we're looking at this lesson of uh, them going to what we call anoint the body. Here we see they had a test. And they felt what they, they thought is that it must not be, uh, they didn't have time because look at the time that this had. I mean, this day. I look at them, they say it's four times of the divisions in the time that they did this here. And you look, three days, they did all this in three days, and they said they had to because they didn't do anything on the Sabbath. They couldn't have a body hanging on this cross on the Sabbath. So it's certain rules they was following, but they didn't know it was a prostitute and it was going to be done that way anyhow. Here we see they rushed to bury him, and so these women said, well, they couldn't embalm that right and I want to do a service. So they went to serve him. Here they tell us that Mary Magdalene, they let us know things about her. And one thing they did, they point out that she had seven demons. You can say one demon, <coughs> and you can see it. All you got to do is look around, and you'll see what a demon does to a body. Because he goes after the flesh, and I mean, you talking about that pain you hear going through? That's demons putting down. God would not put that pressure. But he knew you had to suffer, and he wanted you to know how to go through it. So that's why Jesus came, because to die for the sins and the things that sin would bring on us. Here they said, when they got there, <laughs> and, and they named all the different mirrors that was there, but when I looked at this Mary, uh, uh, Mary Magdalene, they said she came from a, a city called Magna. Duh. And she was, they said there, most of the people that live there are prostitutes. So they knew that with the, from what, for the surroundings that she was, it could possibly she was a prostitute, but we know for a fact she had seven demons, and she was delivered from them. Let me know that was nothing that we have to be taken care of that Jesus didn't show us. Everything came upon him. He showed us just how to handle him. Take it to Jesus. Here we see was the beginning of dawn, all of this happened. And it tells us that 
only way they do discussing the way the tune and how everything had happened. And who who shall why, uh, roll away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And here we see when Mark mentioned it, you have to remember we got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that tells us uh, there what they saw. Matthew explained why the stone was rolled away, and behold, he said there was a great earthquake from the angel of the Lord. So you see how we have an earthquake and all in divers' place and everything. God can do something in a storm that nobody else can do. People be looking for certain things to happen when diseases come up on them. And I, I heard them say, uh, when the COVID hit, <laughs> everybody at the house of prayer <laughs> got COVID. Everybody at the house of prayer didn't get it. They said, well, Chrissy got it. Sister Winston got it. I said, no, Sister Winston got it. Christina didn't. You can see miracles right along. He just, like I said, when he want a storm move, he want to move, he, God ain't got to do much speaking. But it tells us Matthew's, he allowed Matthew's advice to say it was an earthquake. Earthquake can do some damages, y'all. But you know God can set you in the middle, let you be in the middle of it, and he can cover you around and nothing can happen. I don't see him take a big, huge, monumental structure, like they said, that, that, that towel, and just allows destroyed, just like that. But it says this was done. Not for Jesus to get out, but for his witness. Don't let someone hinder your witness. Here when they got the, what do you think, Sister Michelle? What do you think if you went to a knowing you're going to a grave site and it's supposed to be a body down there? Mm -hmm. What would happen? What, what your mind would say? It's dead. Because yeah. right? you know they put a body in there and you looking down there. And don't see it. And, and, and it's like your mind start working, don't it? It's like that. And see, that's why I said we got to renew our mind. So when they went there, they was looking for to see Jesus there. Not to see him there. Oh, all the rumors that had been going along. Oh, somebody going to steal his body. So they put a seal on this rock, they tell me. We put a seal on it so with nobody. And soldiers out there. Like they're going to stop God. We so glad they wrote this today. Because you know so many stories could have went around with this. But it says that as soon as Mary saw that he went here, her mind went to the world too. She didn't think about all them things she had been hearing God say, but she, she ran. And she told two of the disciples, she said, oh, he's not there. Somebody done stole his body. She took on, that's why I said, don't listen to the world, because the world will come up with something. Somebody done stole his body. And so they tell me, like it's not that women's uh, <laughs> doubt it now. They had it back there. They thought, you know, they think women just don't either tell. They make enough stuff, you know. And, but it was two that said, let me search this thing out. That's why they said, if something is happening, established with two, a witness always have a witness. Because for some reason, one possession, it can be a lie. They even got, now you can get a witness, and it'd be a lie. But God always said, have a witness. <coughs> and it's amazing here that she went and she told them, and she came back. I said, I said to myself, they, they rushed at the Bible telling us, after she made the, the women follow her to the tomb. And they found out that Jesus was gone. I like how it said that the stone was already in the troubles that you think when you're going to do something for Jesus, your mind started working. 
right away take your mind to Jesus because you can see when they got there, the stone was rolled away. So they could see that he was there no more. I like how uh, she returned later and was the first one, she was the first one to see Jesus alive. And she made a special appearance. He made it specific. Mary, you go. Now, why are you going to get upset because he sent Mary? Oh, I should do this. You're going to stand there and argue. Just go with God tells you to do, and it'll be all right. Here we see these women was initial in love with what they was doing for Christ, and therefore they worked together. Here we have taken, the, they said, someone has taken our God. They don't move them. There are many who mock their teaching and their thinking. And when John decided to go, <laughs> he was concerned too because of more than, uh, I'm going to go to and see, see what these women see as they're telling me the truth. But it was to the point was they might think we moved them and come after us. Just think, you're doing something <laughs> for the Lord and something is where you are part of it. And then all of a sudden, they're going to look at you for the blame because you hung with it. So they went out. They was, they was the candidates. Here we tell us, John and Peter, to search these things out. Here it's interesting to note that the disciples were not prepared for Jesus' resurrection. They weren't prepared. We need to be prepared because I see the same thing that happened here. The people said they know him, didn't know him. He coming back again. Will you know him? Here we see. They forgot the word. You got to study. They, people start looking at other people thinking, oh, oh, they not telling the truth or not. But the Bible instructs you on everything. Here we see how they consider the possibility of resurrection. Here in today's culture, we need to know the Bible is the truth. Even though they don't believe you, yet they might even might mock you. But it said, tell what Jesus told you to do. And that's what the women of that day did. When they went there, they went there with a task. All believers, now that shows you what he did there when they got to the empty tomb and looked in, that's what letting us know about death and resurrection. He died, but he got up. And these here are witnesses. These are ones that seen. Any comments on the, on the first part, talking about the unexpected empty tomb? No comments? Wasn't that the Sabbath? It's Sabbath. The Sabbath. You said that Mary Magdalene went out there to wash him up and put him in the tomb. Not Mary Magdalene, Joseph. Joseph did put him in. Yeah. Joseph put Jesus in the tomb. You know? Mm -hmm. And um, since so she went down there to, to, to check it out, that's how she heard that he had gone. You know? Mm -mm. He had done that far. She, she went there and looked in. And it was gone. Yeah. They, they came, their task was to put on, uh, to embalm them. Like they said, put more oil Thank on them. Yeah, put the, yeah, put the, 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 all that stuff. Joseph put it on them, but they came, these women came. Their task that was, was. That was the seventh. It was. But they came, they came. After they heard that. No, they, they, Mary was the first one at the tomb. She went back and told the disciples. Yeah. They did, did nobody know until Mary. Mary was the first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mary was the first. She didn't hear it. She was the teller. Mm -hmm. I know she, yeah, she yeah. told her, but you know, when she got there, you know, the angel told her. 
No, that angels told her after in the tomb. It was the angel at the head and the angel at the top. top. Mm -hmm. But she was the first. Go back to your scripture. The first verse tell you Mary got a burial. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was, dog. That was funny. And so, and yeah, mm -hmm. she went. And when she got there, she saw. Yeah, and, yeah. It, yeah but mm -hmm. she didn't hear. She went there. Her task was to anoint the body of Christ. That was her task. Her and the women. Yeah. They name all the different women. The, the second part, has anyone else got anything else to say? The graduate expand understanding. We can go through it together after. The graduate expanding understanding. Let's go to John 26 through 10. We're going to ask uh, Sister Delaney. Will she take 6, 7, and 8? Then comes Simon Peter, following him and went into the sofa and sinked the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, sepulcher, yeah. and he saw and believed. Brother Michael, would you do 9 and 10 for me? Whereas yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. Okay. Brother Prince, would you read verse 19 and 20? In the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the door was were shut, uh, where the uh, excuse me, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, People, be unto you peace. Oh, peace be unto you, excuse me. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hand and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. May the Lord bless the reading of the word, sanctified in our hearts that we don't sin against him. And looking at we see now that we have the report given, and now we see that after uh, Mary went and told John and Peter, we noticed that right away <laughs> they didn't do like the others started thinking that the women were idle or just making up something. They said it's that they took off and uh, it's pointed out that Peter was the older one and, <laughs> and John was the youngest. I really couldn't think of nothing, but they said the first will be last, and the last will be first. He, but they said that because the youngest of the disciples got there, and they was talking about he outrun Peter. But all I could think about is God always told us, go back to his word, and I couldn't get anything out of that, but the first will be last, and the last will be first. All the time you get that, you might get the information, but it might not be your task to do. God has a way of, oh, this one should do this, and that one should do this, but then God will take somebody, a babe, and put her over you, and you be, oh, I've been here this long, and I'm doing this, and God said, uh-uh, he don't work that way. But here, it's surprising uh, that since John was there, why he didn't go in first. <laughs> but it said he just merely leaned in. He leaned in, and from the, my understanding, he saw. And I use it, they say you shouldn't use this, but 
I used to tell my kids, if Jesus rose from the dead and folds his clothes up, you should, <laughs> you know, because God do everything decent and in order. I tell you, he said he leaned in and he looked. And here he said, nobody know why he didn't do this, you know, when he got there. But it says that whatever he saw, he waited until Peter went in. And all I can think is when I do something, I don't want to walk into something and don't have a witness. I don't know why. It's something that uh, somebody done broke in here. I stand out there until the police come. Then I go in so I can have a witness. If I'm doing something, I'd like to have a witness. And then one time I didn't, then I know I needed, it was two stories came up, three. And I'm like, huh? I didn't see it like that, you know, I didn't. But here it says, whatever the reason it was, Peter waited. So they both saw the same thing. Peter trying to say he was youthful so he could run and all this. I, I, I didn't see that, but it could be possible. <laughs> You know, because when we get older, we do move slower. But what was going on in the mind of these things? You can notice that. Think about Sister Michelle. You said when you went to the grave, you would fear could do it. You know, you get there and you, people shooting their tops. You get there, you don't know what's going on. You you might stand there and just keep turning, trying to find out what's going. On. Somebody else might be running. So we don't know what the mindset he had, but for sure, they went in together and they did come up with the same thing. The evidence that the body had not been stolen because if it was stolen, how would they, they, they uh, like I said, why was it everything so neatly in order? When a crew break in, they don't care how they do, they throw things all over and they come to get what they was gonna get. Uh, now, uh, here we see immediately reassuring that it wasn't that somebody, the evidence showed it was the headpiece was folded nice, nicer. It was nothing in a ray. Didn't nobody steal this. But then it says, then it came to itself, when you walk in this way and you keep studying, you might start off with a mind like the world, but he said, I'll bring it to your memory. Here, he gradually expanded understanding because after they saw how the clothes were laid and how, how the pieces had been wrapped around Jesus' body, but they weren't torn loose like somebody breaking out. Peter's also noticed a piece of cloth they had been wrapped around Jesus' head. It was not as if somebody had to force it off or uh, just throw it and don't walk out here. The whole scene was proof that Jesus had risen from the dead. Motivated made it by shame, Peter plunged into the darkness, assuming one man carried <laughs> some kind of lantern or torch. They were saying that it was so dark in these tombs because it was hewed out of rock. And it was saying that that rock had a hole in it. So it was no light to get in it because it was a complete rock. So they assuming that the reason they could see was because they had a lantern. And back then they did use lanterns when they go out at night. So here we see that how it was, it was obvious that there had been nothing rushed about the resurrection. He was not limited to movement, to open a door. He could walk through rocks. He could walk through doors. And he went on, as we get down here, you got to believe that Jesus died and he rose. Here, even though they mocked it and they had all this power to to do these things to him, it was all allowed. This is uh, on many occasions God had told his disciples about what he was going to do, how it was going to happen. 
but they had their minds on how they wanted Jesus to work out when he came. They thought they were their enemies. Oh, on our foot. Yeah, we, we finna take over now. But that's not the scene that Jesus had portrayed. So three of Jesus' followers saw the empty tomb, but was not finished with the report. Here he, you see John wanted them to know, after Peter entered the tomb, John followed, and it was definitely established that he did not, no one stole his body. Here we don't know what they said back and forth to each other, but we know that all we read in the discovery of these, his disciples, he had witnessed. Here it says, after they did all what they were supposed to do to get the proof, disciples went away and went to their home. But on that same day in the evening, you see, this thing just didn't start early in the morning. Stop. That same day in the evening, the doors were shut and the disciples were assembling. They had fear. Think about you doing something against <laughs> the United States. And you really weren't doing it against them, but they said we got what we call, uh, they call them, um, People to come in to spy on you and to do things to you, and they got a list in the FBI. They go to it. So here they had Jesus' disciples on a list. Everybody that followed them, they, they would ask them, is you with him? And so they thought, well, they, the first thing they're going to think, we the one that's stole. We the one that did this against them. But they had to find out proof, had to find out whether or not what was said was true. They had discovered that he wasn't there. But this was just the beginning, y'all, for the spread of the good news. You had to have witness that he died and he rose. He didn't do nothing without witnessing. He, they said that it was in these rooms the body was no longer there. That was established. But well, where is it? They wait only here. We said suddenly Jesus walked through the door where they assembled. That's why I know Perry changed the thing. Didn't know what to do, but they came together. And that's the same thing that happened to us. You don't know what to do? Come together. God came in. He wanted them, don't have no doubt, because they got to carry this good news, y'all. Everything they need. Look at my hand. Look at my feet. See, they know ain't nobody going to go around with nail prints in their hand and walking around. Nobody has ever came away that they said it was dead and rose. Here, he wanted to reassure them about this body. Because <laughs> see, if this body that he had could come back, then that is showing us that one day we going to, hallelujah, one day we going to have that body. We ain't got no, no reason that not have the proof because it's in his word. Resurrection becomes a centerpiece of our life when you're Christian. Because you got to realize that he died. He wanted to be sure. You know how you're trying to take a message and you don't know nothing about it? People can easily throw a question at you and you don't know what to say. But when you get into this word, he wants you to be sure. Because Jesus is alive today. He is our living word. It ain't enough to just peep in this Bible, but he wants you to have reassurance. And here it says, the challenge is the joy. When you know something and it's for sure, you should be able to rejoice and tell somebody that he lives. He's not dead. Jesus is the word. 
and we should be rejoicing. Don't let nobody take it away and say it to you. Uh, you don't really know. But understand his crucifixion, his death, was all you don't see people be crucified. And you don't see people die. But he came alive, y'all. He got up. Don't leave him in the grave. That's why a lot of times you hear him say, singing the song. And, and you sing about how he died on the cross. But don't leave him there. Don't leave him there because you know he lives in you. Concluding this lesson, we challenge you to make Jesus your choice. If anyone in here has anything, I talk about the living word. To be in the presence of Jesus. It's the highest joy you can have. Don't sit when it's time to praise God. Give him the highest praise. Those who love Christ are eager to be a witness to his resurrection and salvation. Some people believe after much consultation, others believe right away. No matter how well we know the Bible, get away bringing forth fresh truth as we reread and meditate upon them in the midst of our worst fear and trouble. Jesus is with us, offering us peace. Remember, he walked into it, and that's why I said, no matter where you go, you don't argue. He said, peace to this house. Comment, question, I'm going to turn it into the hand of the super All right. God bless you. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. Yeah, Jesus. 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 I'm so glad he wrote. Yeah. I'm so glad he wrote. And it's not really a whole lot to say about this lesson. We can read it in all the accounts of the Gospels. And just to give you a different account, not so different, but I just want to share because it was in our related scriptures. Luke 24, verses 1 through 12. The victorious resurrection. Yeah, yeah. Luke what? Luke 24, 1 through 12. Just a recount of what Sister Winston shared. Her lesson came out of Mark or John. Okay. Hers came out of John mm -hmm. chapter 20. So here in Luke, 24, it reads, now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of Lord Jesus Christ. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid, because Sister Michelle said, she would have been afraid. <laughs> so just to let you know, you weren't the only one. As they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. And then they took him back. You know, sometimes we have to go back and remember. 
that says here. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. He said that. And they remembered his words. Sometimes we need a reminder. And returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales. Just couldn't believe. And they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre. And stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. Christ risen from the dead. This is the day that we rejoice. We rejoice. Glory. Because the fact that he resurrected That's right. gives us the hope that we're going to follow suit That's right. That's and do right. the same thing. That's right. So Jesus appeared to his disciples the same day, same day. at evening. Mm -hmm. This refers to the day of his resurrection. Mm -hmm. He passed through the locked doors yes, of the room. Hello. <laughs> yes. And said, Peace be unto you. Then he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were filled with joy. Yes. It was time to rejoice. Yes. And you know, on this day in particular, I always think about that song, Because He Lives. Because Amen. He Lives, Amen. I can face tomorrow. Yes, yes, yes. Because He Lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds my future. Yes. Finish it for me, God. And life is worth the living. Yes. Just because he lives. Because he lives. That's it. So I thank you all for being here. I encourage you to study your word. Not just today, but find time every day so that you can learn more about the Lord, so that you can form a closer relationship. You can't have a relationship with someone that you don't know. And we want to get to know them better and better. So with that, I ask Deacon Prince if he would dismiss the class. Amen. Continue to touch us and every one of us, God, continue to bless our families.